Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at the Kurt Class 4 trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Ford F-150. And this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed on your truck and this is a pretty well hidden cross tube. You can see a little bit of the hitch hanging down but overall it hides behind the bumper leaving the only thing visible, the receiver tube opening, the safety chain loops. Now this receiver is a two inch by two inch, which is great. There's gonna be tons of accessories, whether you're picking a ball mount, bike rack or cargo carrier, and all of those are gonna stay in place with a five eighths pin and clip. Now this is not included with the hitch. A lot of times when you pick up accessories, they'll have one with it. Um, but if you wanna leave your accessory on the vehicle long term, you might wanna look into getting a locking pin and clip. That way you can lock this in place and know that no one's gonna walk away with those accessories. So a plate style safety chain loop here. So when hooking up your trailer with your safety chains, you can get a standard S hook on there, no problem. Even a larger clevis style is gonna work just fine. Now, speaking of towing, this is a pretty heavy duty hitch. So you're gonna have some serious towing capacity, uh, at least at what it's rated at. Our gross trailer weight rating out the gate is gonna be 10,000 pounds. And that's gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. And that's a pretty hefty gross trailer weight rating. As far as tongue weight rating, which is the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube opening, that can come into play when towing. Generally, it should be 10 to 15% of the total weight of the trailer, but a lot of times it's gonna come into play with bike racks and cargo carriers, things that are suspended. And with a thousand pounds, you could load up a four bike bike rack, no problem, a cargo carrier with no problem, and I don't think you'll ever go over that thousand pounds. Now, if you need to bump up that capacity just a little bit, you can use a weight distribution hitch on here, and that's gonna give you 12,000 pounds for your gross trailer weight rating, which is a serious number there. Uh, your tongue weight rating also goes up a little bit to 1,200 pounds. Now, keep in mind, just because the hitch is rated that doesn't mean that the truck is. So check your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the truck is capable of towing, and then compare that with the hitch, as well as any of the accessories you'll be using to tow, and take the lowest number, that way you stay safe. Now when choosing a ball mount, you wanna make sure that it sticks out far enough to where the coupler's not gonna make contact with a bumper. And if you're picking a bike rack or cargo carrier that stows in the upright position, you wanna make sure that it's gonna clear the bumper. And this one coming from the center of the hitchman hole, the furthest point of our bumper is three inches. So I really don't worry too much that you'll make contact. Now, something to keep in mind with those folding accessories, uh, when they're in the stowed position, you probably won't be able to open up your tailgate, but it's generally gonna be empty, so you can lower that down, still gain access if you need to. As far as ground clearance goes, this one is gonna come in at 17, 17 and a half inches, somewhere in there. Uh, and that's a pretty good uh, you know, ground clearance for your suspended accessories. Uh, you wanna make sure that they're not gonna bottom out as you go up inclines. But also this is gonna be more important for choosing a ball mount and determining the rise or drop. So you can measure the coupler of your trailer and then compare that with the 17 and a half inches, determine that rise or drop necessary. That way your trailer's gonna be nice and level. Now, as far as installation goes, this isn't too terribly hard to do. It's a little bit cumbersome and you're gonna probably want an extra set of hands to help raise it up to get the hardware in place. Um, but other than that, it's just a few steps. Now, if you are replacing your existing hitch to get a little bit more capacity, you're obviously gonna have to remove that first. Um, but as far as getting this in, I'll walk you through all those steps to make sure you get your hitch installed. So let's take a look. To begin our installation, first you're gonna to wanna to remove your spare tire. So lower that down, get it out of the way. It's gonna give us a lot more room to work underneath here. And then we'll head over to our passenger side frame rail. Here we're gonna find a ground attached with a 10 millimeter bolt. So we'll go ahead and get this removed. And we're gonna be, there's new hardware included with the hitch. So we're not gonna be reusing this bolt. You can kind of hold on to that if you want, but either way, it's not gonna go back on. Once that's removed, you can just take your ground wire and set it up here for now. We'll reinstall that later. On our driver's side, we have this large harness that we'll need to remove. There's a circular part that clips into the frame rail and there's tabs on it. What I recommend doing, you can use a flathead screwdriver, just push one of the tabs in. There's gonna be one on the other side. You might wanna put a little bit of backwards pressure just to kind of pull this out. But once you push that tab in, that'll slide out. There's also a plastic push pin in the frame, so we'll just pry this off, and that's gonna get this out of the way. I recommend getting this zip tied up out of the way because we're gonna be mounting up some hardware, and just for getting our hitch up, it's gonna be a lot easier with this uh, tucked away. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda run this up over this cross member, and then just with zip ties, zip this up out of the way.
On both sides of the vehicle, we're gonna grab our U-shaped spacers, and these are gonna fill up the gap that's in this inset. We'll need to make sure that we're not covering up this ground hole because eventually we're gonna be using that new bolt to get that ground wire back in place. So take this, center it up. You can see we still have our gap here. And then we're gonna just take some masking tape or we have painter's tape here, whatever you may have to kind of keep this stuck in place. And then just make sure that this is notched out to be able to get that hardware in place. We still have our access hole here, so we're looking good. We'll go ahead and tape up the other side as well. We need to get our hardware in place and we'll start with this U-shaped spacer hole. We're gonna grab our carriage bolt, our fish wire and our spacer block. And there's an access hole that's on the back of the frame here, but I don't think this is gonna fit. So we're gonna use this access hole that's further up the frame. Take your coiled end and feed this through the hole. And then as you feed it back, feel for that coiled end. You may have to kind of fish around for it, but then we'll pull that through. I'm gonna put a little bend on this end just to kind of keep it from pulling through the frame. And then we'll take our spacer block. We can drop this in the frame. And then your carriage bolt, you'll just thread onto this coiled section. And then we'll grab this tail end here, push the carriage bolt in the frame. And then as you kind of bring this over, you may have to jostle it around a little bit. And you'll see that this is gonna be able to pull through here. Now, when we raise the hitch up, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this isn't in the way. So for now, we're just gonna push this back in the frame reel. Our other mounting point is gonna be the hole that's towards the rear of the vehicle on the lower side, really close to that access hole. So what we'll do here, feed this over. Drop in our spacer block. We'll feed on our carriage bolt. And then on this one, we're gonna be using an extra spacer block that's gonna go between the frame and the hitch. So it may not stay on here, but what we'll do is I'm gonna push this back in. I'm gonna take my spacer block and then just kind of bend our fish wire here so it stays in place because as we raise the hitch up, we want this to slide in place over. We'll just go ahead and repeat the same steps on the other side of the truck. Now you're gonna probably want an extra set of hands here uh, to raise the hitch in place. We'll feed our fish wires in the corresponding holes and then kind of pull the slack as you go up. And you're gonna to wanna to have one of your serrated flange nuts ready on each side because what we're gonna to try to do is get one pulled through each of the holes and that way we can support this up. And then once, once we get that pulled through, you can use the weight of the hitch to kind of rest against uh, the bolt and that way you can get this threaded on just all you need is a few threads here but you want to make sure it doesn't push back in the frame and with one started on each side that'll hold the hitch up allowing us to do the same thing for the remainder of the hardware before we snug everything down we're going to want to get our ground wire back in with our new bolt and if you need a little bit of extra slack you can undo this plastic push pin you may need to raise the hitch up to get this aligned uh, and you don't need to tighten it down. We just want to get some of those threads started here. With all of our hardware started, we're going to take a 15, 16 socket and we're going to snug these all down. We're going to come back with a torque wrench so you don't have to get too crazy here, but we'll start to draw these in. Coming back with our torque wrench, we're gonna to torque these down to the manufacturer's recommendation in the instruction manual. It, you're gonna want a half inch torque wrench to accomplish this torque setting. Uh, now, if you need a torque wrench, we have them available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free, but this is gonna make sure that long-term, all of our hardware is gonna be tight enough to where it's not gonna loosen up over time. So go through, get these all torqued down. Once you get that torque down, then you can tighten down your uh, ground wire with the 13 millimeter socket. 
Something I will point out is it is going to get a little bit tight here with the spare tire. Ours is against the hitch. I was still able to get this back in place. Uh, now ours is going to be a 245 70 17. So if you have a larger full size spare than that, uh, it might get a little bit tight here. I do still have some wiggle room up front, but just something to keep in mind if you do have a larger tire on your truck. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt Class 4 trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Ford F-150.